The Devil Coast of the Normandy region has heavy rain and flash floods. The storm has caused great damage to the people here. Terrible storm, like a tsunami, has just swallowed France's beautiful Devil Coast. What happened? Is that God's wrath? Is that the second coming of God? In this episode, I will explain in more detail. Smash that thumbs up button for me. Leave me a comment down below and share this video with your friends. And let's get started. The tranquil shores that once epitomized elegance and serenity have been transformed into scenes of chaos and devastation as towering waves crash mercilessly onto the once pristine beaches. The storm surged forth with an unrelenting fury, unleashing its wrath upon everything in its path. Buildings that stood for generations as symbols of charm and sophistication now lie in ruins, their walls shattered by the force of the tempestuous winds. The picturesque promenades, once bustling with life and laughter, now lay desolate and torn asunder by the raging waters. As the storm swept through, it spared nothing in its path, uprooting trees, toppling structures, and leaving behind a trail of destruction that stretches as far as the eye can see. A tsunami comes with fierce storms. It brings with it a wall of water that can reach staggering heights, traveling at incredible speeds across the ocean before crashing onto shore with devastating force. The combination of powerful waves, swirling currents, and debris carried inland can wreak havoc on coastal infrastructure, sweeping away buildings, vehicles, and anything else in its path. In the face of such cataclysmic events, communities must heed warnings. Prepare emergency plans and work together to mitigate the impact and ensure the safety and well-being of all residents. The storm is still growing as strong as it is. They destroyed everything, leaving nothing behind, including humans. The once vibrant coastal community of Doval now lies in ruins, its streets littered with debris, and its buildings reduced to rubble. In the wake of the storm's destructive onslaught, there is a haunting silence, broken only by the occasional sound of distant sirens and the cries of those searching for loved ones amidst the devastation. The loss is immeasurable, both in terms of physical destruction and human tragedy. Homes that once provided shelter and comfort have been torn apart, their inhabitants left homeless and vulnerable. Families have been torn apart, their lives shattered by the sudden and merciless force of nature. After all, everyone is guilty. But if one is saved, it is only because of God's grace. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith you and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Yet, amidst the despair and destruction, there shines a glimmer of hope. Volunteers and first responders from near and far converge on the scene, offering assistance and support to those in need. It is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit as communities come together in solidarity to confront the challenges ahead. As the storm finally begins to wane and the skies clear, the long and arduous process of recovery and rebuilding be It will be a journey fraught with challenges and setbacks, but it is a journey that the people of Dulville will undertake with determination and courage. It's drawings from each other as they strive to rebuild their beloved coastal paradise. The world and other religions calls the disaster a natural disaster. The false Christian teachers calls it from Satan. Many Christians use the following scripture to out of context. Joe 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. According to many Christians' teachers, Satan comes but to steal, to kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give abundant life. Have you ever considered, why does God bring calamity? Because of sin. God is angry with the sinner because of his righteousness. His eyes are too pure to look at evil. Hab 1. 13 thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and you cannot look on iniquity. God can bring calamity and can use Satan, but God is not the author of sin. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1. 5 God is infinitely holy. Isaiah 6. 3 God hates men, not as his creatures, but as sinners. As his creatures, God is good to all. Magd 5.45, that may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. But God hates sin. If you look at the nations that were hit by tsunami, they believe the God of Islam, the God of Buddhism, and the God of Hinduism. 
The God of the Bible hates idolatry. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will surely bring calamity on them which they will not be able to escape. And though they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense, but they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of your cities were your gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, you have set up altars to that shameful thing, altars to burn incense to Baal. So do not pray for this people, or lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their trouble. Jeremiah 11, 11, 14. See also Ezekiel 8, 15, 18. There are two parties angry, God and man on man's part. He is angry with God. There is enmity due to sin because the carnal mind is enmity against God, row 8, 7, and from God's part. He is angry with the sinner. Some say God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. It does not say that in scripture, but the scripture says just the opposite P.S. In 711 God, judge the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. During the time of Jesus, a tower fell and killed many people. Some asked Jesus this question in Luke 13. Sir, those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse sinners than all other men who dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. God bring calamity to believers for their own good, so God will be glorified. Hebrew 8.28, and we know that all things work together, for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. The brothers of Joseph tried to kill him and sold Joseph to Ishmaelites who were on their way to Egypt, but later they repented when they saw Joseph. Then, this is what Joseph said, G, 50.20, but as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it and good to bring to pass, as it is this day to save much people alive. God brought calamity to Job to show the sovereignty, the power, and the mercy of God. Jays. 5. 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful, and end of tender mirror. 1 Kings 9. Then they will answer, because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. Joel 2, 13, rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Isaiah 45, 22, turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. If only the people knew of the terrible tsunami that's going to come upon them, how many would have escaped? The Bible speaks of a greater disaster, the wrath of God, his judgment that will come upon all those who does not trust in Jesus Christ. John 3, 36, he who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. There are many who call themselves Christians, but in reality, they live like the unbelievers. God will bring judgment to all who live in disobedience. Many in the USS and other rich nations live in comfort, and they think no judgment will come to them. But listen to what Jesus said. 1726, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. 27, they did eat, they drank. They married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah he entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all 28. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank. They bought, they sold, they planted, they planted, they builded 29. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. The sudden disaster of the tsunami shows the power of God, and we all should tremble of his holiness and stop playing games with God and come to true repentance. Here is the opportunity for Christians to pray and help those who are in need should show our Christian love and use this opportunity to take the gospel of Christ to nations that are lost without Christ. The ultimate question is, how can a person flee from the wrath of God? The answer is Christ Jesus. Do not trust in your righteousness, in your merits, in your gods, in saints, in religions, in the bank account, in wealth, 
but trust only in the righteousness of Christ, his work on the cross that pleased the God, his sacrifice on the cross that satisfied the God. Nothing else satisfies God, only what Jesus did, his signs, wonders, and wonders. But when it comes to his judgment, they leave or have the tendency to rely on one's own imagination of his image and how they perceive him, want to worship, or get to know him. One of the best lessons from God describing his judgment and salvation recorded by God through His Holy Spirit to others is in Isaiah 65. At least say 65. See, I who recorded it through the Holy Spirit given by God, and it was passed down from generation to generation. Judgment, then salvation. Isaiah 65, 1. I have revealed myself to those who did not ask me. I was found by people who weren't looking for me. To a nation that does not call my name, I say, here I am, and here I am, all day long. I've raised my hand to welcome intolerant people, following bad paths, pursuing their own imaginations, people who always provoke me right in the face. Most people will react quickly and say, but that's the Old Testament, and think that's not the God of the New Testament. That is not true. He never changes who he is, but how we know him through his Holy Spirit is the only change for all of humanity. The New Testament is carried out through his Holy Spirit, through his Son, Jesus Christ, his Holy Son in the New Testament. In Isaiah 64, Isaiah asks God the same question that was asked of Jesus in the New Testament. Therefore, he must deal with sin. His justice demands it, even his love compels it. How could a God of true love simply overlook the actions of a murderer or a pedophile? The second detail Jesus gave is, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, this is one of the most encouraging verses from the entire Olivet Discourse. As Jesus descends to earth, he will be accompanied by an army of angels from heaven. They will be in charge of gathering God's faithful saints who are scattered from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other, that is, all over the earth. This gathering will bring together all of God's faithful people, both past and present. Isaiah 64, 5, he comes to help those who cheerfully do what is right, remembering his ways. But when we continue to sin with them, you became angry. Then how can we be saved? Then God answered in Isaiah 65. The same meaning of Isaiah was heard by Jesus in Luke 13, 24, when someone asked him, Lord, will only a few be saved? And Jesus was recorded by Luke through the same Holy Spirit that Isaiah was recorded with. The message of judgment and salvation is the same. Listen to God's word and go through the narrow door. Don't follow your imagination, but go through the wide door. Luke 13, 24, make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will try to enter and will not be able. There are three judgments of God upon his first chosen people, the Israelites, clearly recorded by Isaiah at the beginning of Isaiah 65. Stretch out a helping hand to the wayward people. They are stubborn and stubborn in resisting God. Even though he always teaches them how to worship him in truth and reaches out to help them, they still do not listen to him. They continue to ignore him, his word, and his truth. He sent prophet after prophet to warn them, but they still ignored his instructions and the truth he gave his prophets to speak. The Holy Spirit records the same message through Paul in the New Testament in his letter to the Romans about some obstinate Jews. Romans 10. 21 God said they followed a bad path, following their own imagination. God wants us to use our imagination. He gives them to us because his purpose is to create useful things that will make our lives richer and better, lived without suffering. All things on earth should be used for his purposes and glory and our imaginations, used for the common good of all, not for evil or for our own glory. We Another part of our imagination that we don't use is to get to know him and how to worship him. We have all been taught about God through his Holy Spirit, and his word confirms all that we have been taught. We should never add to his words with our imagination or take away any of his words to suit our own imagination and lifestyle. He said people who lived like these types of people were like smoke going into his nose. As for me, I don't want smoke in my father's nostrils, and I don't want anyone else in my father's nostrils with smoke either. The same thing happened to me as it did to Isaiah, Paul, Jesus, and all who followed him. There are three more judgments recorded in Isaiah 65 for Israel. Recorded in Isaiah 65. Isaiah 65. 
11. But as for those who forsake the Lord, forget my holy mountain, set up tables for good fortune, and fill bowls of wine mixed with fate. I will appoint you to hold sword, and all ye shall stoop to slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight, and chose what displeased me. For those who forsake the Lord, and forget my holy mountain. His holy mountain today is those who worship His truth and His Holy Spirit wherever they are. So don't give up on Him by not listening to Him and following His Spirit and truth. Today, those are the only worshipers He seeks. John 4, 21, Jesus declared, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. 22, you Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, that we may be saved. 23, however, the time is coming when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the worshipers whom the Father search. Worshipers must worship in spirit and truth. You are the one who sets the table to find luck. We should not set the table with food or material possessions to show that we are lucky, but to show that we are grateful and share our table with others. Many people today like to show off how lucky they are with all the food they have eat and where they go to get what they eat. Look at me and what I have, and if you follow me, you can also have what I have. All this type of mentality and actions do not come from God. You are the one who filled the bowl of mixed wine for Du Yin, and although I've been told that mixing white and red wine doesn't taste good or fresh with the old, Jesus uses this analogy as an example of God's old covenant through the law, not harmonizing well with the new covenant given by God through His Spirit by following the Spirit and being faithful, fulfilled daily by carrying His cross, fulfilling the old covenant through God's miracles. Wrote, another thing he said does not mix well is our flesh with His Spirit. He said that our flesh must be faithfully crucified before His Spirit can work fully through us faithfully. He also gives us another example of darkness and light, not being in harmony with each other, meaning that the ways of Satan and God are not in harmony with each other. Another formula for marriage that does not mix well is the world's ways and God's ways. Another way that doesn't combine well is to use all kinds of wisdom from human and God formation and mix it all together. He wants us to seek only Him and His ways for our destiny. And if we fail to do so, His judgment will be proven by the outcome of our lives and souls. Revelation 11 2. As for the outer court of the temple, leave it outside. Do not measure it. For that place has been given to the Gentiles, and they will trample on the holy city for 42 months. That is God's part of judgment, not to make our lives worse, but to save us from everything He knows will harm us. We have not yet resolved the answer, who will be saved? We have all the answers to the question of who wants to be saved, but who will be saved? It is really simple and not difficult, because He has given us everything to know and trust Him in the past when we look back at the history of His chosen people, and He still gives us all what we need through His Holy Spirit of truth. Come on, it is also used for the district located between the mountains of central Palestine and the Mediterranean Sea and north of Joppa. Daniel 7.25, He will speak blasphemy against the Most High, and will waste away the saints of the Most High, and will intend to change times and laws. The saints will be delivered into His hand for a time, times, and half a time. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.